All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, folks are just starting to join us. This is Dr. Bill, welcome to Healed Because God Said So. And I'll tell you what, uh, I can't find a better reason than to understand from the scriptures that God said so. He calls us healed. And so we can agree with the report of our physical uh, uh, awareness, or we can b b agree with the report of our God and our creator. So good to see everyone joining us this evening. Uh, good to have Apostle Jermaine with me. Uh, Dr. Fay uh, is on tonight, and several others are already on. Uh, Dr. Michael, I'm expecting him to join shortly. Uh, Dr. Cindy is away. They're tending to her husband's uh, father uh, or grandfather. I, I forget. Uh, but uh, yeah, her, uh, her husband's dad. Anyway, uh, she may pop in, but good to see everybody tonight. Uh, Apostle Jermaine, good to see you, buddy. How are you? Hey, I, I'm glad to be here, Bishop. Man, it's been uh, one of those days, but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> well, you know, uh, there are always um, what I've, I've come to call challenges. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're not, they're not tests. They're not difficult. They're just, no. they're just challenges. And we know we're getting to the other side. Just yep. sometimes we want to hurry up to get there. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But uh, anyway, good to see everybody joining us tonight. Um, and we are talking about analyzing the mind of dust. This is part three, uh, very possibly our final uh, uh, submission to this, uh, this series. Uh, but what we want to go to tonight is we've been analyzing some of the parables of Jesus and how they allegorically relate to us. Now, if you don't understand allegory, I, I try to share those things in the posts uh, on Facebook, especially last week, I did a lot of definitions. But uh, here, it's, it's a, a picture, a way that Jesus related to people. Uh, but here in the, the three synoptic gospels, we find the parable of the sower. Now, there's some extra information that I have for you on that. And uh, uh, anyway, uh, in these parables, Jesus first tells the parable. And you'll notice this is, is pretty consistent that then he, then he shares the purpose for the parable. And then finally, he gives the explanation to the parable. So, you know, it may be that you have a hard time understanding parables. And the fact is, is that parables are not always easy to understand, but uh, they are understandable. And so uh, good to see Dr. Michael Porter popping in here. Good to see you, my brother. Hey, how's everybody doing? How's it going, sir? Good. All right, Apostle, how you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good, man. Well, we're just getting rolling, and we're talking about the this parable here. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and read Matthew 13, verses 3 through 9. But I'm going to read this tonight from the Passion Translation. Now, I realize that I could have pulled up the Mirror Bible. I could have done some other things, but I really like the way this word's in the Passion Translation. It says, he taught them many things by using stories, parables that would illustrate uh, parables that would illustrate spiritual truth, saying, consider this, there was a farmer who went out to sow, uh, to sow seeds, and he cast his seeds, as he cast the seeds, some fell on the beaten path, and the birds came and ate them. Uh, I don't know if you ever felt that way before, but when we get into this tonight, this is really going to be a blessing to you. Um, uh, other seeds fell on to, onto gravel, and if you know, you can't plant seeds onto concrete or onto gravel. It just doesn't work uh, too good. Uh, other seeds fell onto gravel that had no topsoil. I think the King James or the New King James might say something like it, it had no, no depth in it. Uh, the, the seeds quickly shot up, but when the days grew hot, the sprouts were so scorched and withered uh, because they had insufficient roots. Other seeds fell among the thorns and weeds. Uh, and if you know, uh, you know, one of the things my wife and I learned early on, especially me, uh, gardening was not my thing. Okay. Like uh, if I plant it and it comes up, it's surely going to die. <laughs> if, I, if I don't get to pick it first and weeds are terrible, but it says, so fell among thorns and weeds so that the seeds sprouted uh, and so did the weeds cr uh, crowding out the good plants, but the other seeds fell on uh, ground 
uh, good rich soil that kept producing a good harvest. Some yielded 30, some 60, and some even 100 times as much as he planted. If you're able to understand this, then you need to respond. Okay, so again, there's a lot to this, uh, but here we see uh, the soil being sown, which in times past, we always referred to the soil uh, as uh, the good ground of the heart, or uh, in this case, of the mind. So uh, let's go to our panel tonight. We're going to start off with Dr. Michael, because uh, I originally uh, heard something from him that got me started on this, and this is a really great parable, and plus, I know that Apostle Germain is like, if I'm on a panel, don't ask me first. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but Dr. Michael, where, where does this go? What is Jesus really trying to tell people as we're analyzing the, the, the dust, the mind of dust? And how does this relate when we look at this story? Well, uh, you know, let me start by saying how I used to teach this parable uh, or maybe how some teach this parable. Right. But the, the four, the four types were four types of people. And, um, you know, we won't get into it, but that was the kind of basic principle. But now from my, my point of view, the problem with teaching it that way is only one fourth of the people are going to end up in good shape and three fourths of them are going to end up in terrible shape. So to me now it has nothing to do with the population of the earth, but it has everything to do with four different kind of mindsets that we all have within us at different times that we experience at different times. And to me, Jesus is telling us a parable, a picture, an allegorical picture of different ways that we can think within ourselves and how, to me, the most important thing about the parable is how you think determines what happens to the word you receive. And I think that uh, I'll just use this as my opening statement. And um, of course, all opinions are mine. But I think that that's one reason why you see people sit under even oftentimes really good preaching and teaching. And they glean some things from it, but they a lot never get lasting truths out of it. Because we've never taught people how to meditate or concentrate or focus on the word that they've received. Sometimes I think we might be better off to shut church down for a while and teach people how to meditate first. And then uh, let them uh, be able to pull what's taught in. But so I'll just say the overarching view of this parable to me is Jesus is talking to me about four different kinds of conscious awareness that I can have within myself at any given time. I can flow in and out of them based on my thinking and how flowing in and out of those different trains of thought will affect the truths that I'm hearing or the truth that I'm receiving you know, in the spirit. And he, he constantly in this parable, just here in our general opening statements, he constantly says in, in here and other places, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. And to me, that um, that ear is not a literal ear, obviously. When he's saying to me, it means, let him who is receptive to the mind of the Spirit be receptive to the mind of the Spirit. So if you got ears to hear, it means you're just receptive or open. And I believe part of the beginning of the process I don't really like the word process, but I'll use it there. Part of the beginning of the journey, let me say it like that, is to have an open mind. Yeah. Uh, because what happens to us is, before we get in depth into the actual scripture, I believe what happens to us, we get so locked into a belief system that when a new truth comes along, it does, similar to this parable, it falls on a certain kind of ground within this earth right here, or this concept of earth. And it, it doesn't produce much or it produces some, but is not lasting. It's not fruit that remains. So I believe the parable revolves around inner truths within ourselves, four levels of thinking, four different kinds of mindsets that we can exhibit and how those mindsets affect what's happening with the truth or the spirit speaking within us to us. Yeah. You know, in your, 
your uh, opinion, as you call it, or is your opinion, it really uh, is our opinion too. I mean, I know that I can say that for myself, that these are definitely speaking of mindsets. And I've heard this preached uh, in the word of faith camp, in the kingdom camp, in the Pentecostal camp. And, you know, every view is uh, a little bit different. And, and since I now don't have a camp, but really the Jesus camp, I just, uh, <laughs> You know, <laughs> you, you don't want to get kicked out of so many camps, you know, and, and I'm just joking about that. But uh, but, you know, I, and I'm sure you're not talking about when you say meditate, we're not talking about sitting around in a circle and and doing some uh, Eastern philosophy type chanting. But what but what but, you know, the word, you know, one of the first expressions of the word meditate in the Bible was Joshua 1, 8, when he said that shall meditate day and night. Uh, the word meditate there uh, w- without going into the actual Hebrew enunciation of the word can mean to ponder. It can mean to imagine. It can mean to mutter. Uh, even uh, even sometimes uh, to speak or, or to to utter, uh, even to speak under your breath, uh, just 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 meditating, just imagine, just going over over in a multiplicity of ways. And and so many people don't understand that. Uh, and I would just say this, that we need to not be afraid of, uh, of meditating or uh, doing what, and I know that Dr. K teaches on different levels of meditation and things, and I, and I get all that's wonderful. But, you know, here's the thing that the Passion Translation footnotes really amazed me. It says that the Aramaic and Greek uh, use a word for parable, which means a metaphor, allegory, simile. Uh, illustration, comparison, a figure of speech, a riddle, or an uh, uh, enigmatic saying that is meant to stimulate intense thought. Now that's that's meditation. It's meant to see Jesus was trying to stimulate intense thought in the people around him. Apostle Jermaine, uh, please continue on because I got I just feel like this is going to be super, super great tonight. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, and, and uh, definitely, like, when, when Apostle uh, gets on, Dr., he kind of builds a, 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 a framework to work in, mm-hmm. uh, and so I appreciate that. Um, looking at this and, and, and considering, you know, to, what to talk about in the show and just meditating on some of the points you know, that's laid out here, um, and definitely what we've been tracking in and what we've been conveying, and uh and as uh, Dr. Porter pointed out, you know, in these uh, parables you hear, he say, let them, they have an ear, you know, hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And so, um, you know, in these moments, it's, it's the the opportunity to, to uh, one, raise awareness. That's what we do. That's what we've been doing on this show is just raising awareness and opportunity to say, hey, consider, you know, another perspective to him, you know, that they have an ear. It's, these are uh, 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 not concepts of men you know that we're you know projecting upon people this is the reality of what what is true you know uh, uh father's heart if you want to say that you know his expectations for us you know yeah. what's mirrored in christ you know is uh the reality that could be mirrored in us and it's a matter of perspective and in in and, and, and as we talked about in the outline here in the parable about uh as uh, dr porter beautifully laid that out that this different uh uh faith i say uh faces of awareness, not necessarily levels, you know, um, uh, because oftentimes our mind affixed to a a process mentality that this is something that you have to do to work at, <laughs> you know. So I have to work through these different levels of of mindsets and awareness, um, and and that's not what we're proposing here. What we're saying is that this is a reality, you know, that is uh, 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 there, uh, and we have a choice to choose, you know, what we perceive and what we become aware of, yes. or um, also too, I think. Uh, one of the things that uh, that that we that we highlight a lot too is also about you know your own kingdom that you are the king you know of your oh, own yeah. kingdom, and so this speaks more to the reality you know in us to empower us to what we have uh, that we what we have already been given you be given all things you know that pertain unto life and godliness you lack no good thing, and so the the emphasis the emphasis that we place in this is say hey you know you know, stop, take a pause, take a minute, you know, and ponder, you know, about mm-hmm. what, what you confess or what you say or what you believe, because all of this goes into uh, a, a worldview, 
-hmm. you know, if you will, because this spills over into how you project what you perceive to be on the inside or what you perceive to be on the outside. And so, uh, or not being aware of the reality of the kingdom of God on the inside of you and living according to the conditions of the world around you, you mm -hmm. know, and that becomes your, uh, your lens, if you will. And so what we're proposing or what we're suggesting is, you know, take a, 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 a take a, uh, your, your, your show, you know, read, look, you know, take another look, you know, oh, yeah. consider, yeah. you know, so that's what meditation also does. It says, Hey, you know, consider, you know, another perspective, consider, you know, another thought and consider this. And so, uh, it happened for me when I heard the Lord say to me, he said, well, what is reality? And I mean, you know, well, you have more of the answer <laughs> of, of what is reality than I do. Uh, but the, but this to me it was it was a definitive moment for me because uh, this was not something that was outside of me. It was a reality that was uh, coming alive, or I was coming aware of that is alive in me. You know that yeah. this reality of His goodness, this reality of His love, the reality you know that was never disconnected of my sonship and my identity. You know, and waking up to that, I could have chose you know to not engage you know, well, that question, if you will, to give ponder to it, you know, give meditation to it. And so it, like, even recently, uh, I was just thinking about the goodness of God. You know, we, 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 we say that we say things often, you know, our words, uh, betray us at times, you know, we, we say, you know, we say God is good all the time. We get the call and response thing about the oh, goodness yeah. of God, yeah. you know, but we never give ponder or wonder to what, what is, what is in that? What is, what is in the goodness of God? What is the goodness of God in me? What is the goodness of God in my reality? What if the goodness of God uh, is my reality? And so you 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 push, huh? That's good. <laughs> yeah. So you know what what so so there's this nudge to push you beyond uh, what what you've been conditioned to think, what you've been conditioned to ponder and, 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 and it awakens in you. So when you go back also to, uh, let's say John 15, when Jesus talks about the tree, that I am the vine, you know, you are the branches. And so, mm -hmm. you know, this these metaphors, these pictures of plants uh, 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 in creation, you don't see, you know, uh, uh, the, the branch of a tree or um, wondering if it's going to be nourished, if it's going to have provisions, you know, it just simply abides. Uh, and so in, in, in what uh, Apostle, is, is, is saying even in meditation, it, it teaches you how to abide, you know, in the awareness of all that Father is, and it becomes, uh, it's like uh, the old saying, you, you, uh, you, you are who you hang around with. <laughs> or you, you are know, what you eat. <laughs> yeah, you are what you eat. You know, so that's what, that's, that's what uh, I believe we're, we're, we're setting up, you know, for one, the, 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 uh, the ownership of that, that you can take ownership, that you don't have to be passive yes, about the thoughts and the thinking that's coming into your mind. You don't have to be passive, you know, in, in, in this, uh, in this life, you have been empowered with more than enough. And so it's to shift or to nudge you over to consider another perspective or to take another look. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And, and uh, thank you so much for mentioning that because that really is what prompts me a lot of times is, and I've even, uh, even in preparing my doctorate class for this week, I told my students, you know, here's, here's the ins and outs of, of your, his faith versus your faith. But let me, and I just saw him, but you know, if what you've been doing to try to build your faith and create this whole new strong faith, other than what the faith that the apostle Paul operated out, he said, I live by the faith of the son of God. Uh, if that hadn't been working for you real well, then consider something different. And then I be, begin to present my class. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, Dr. Michael, throughout history, um, uh, there's been all kinds of people that have used this, this method of allegories. Uh, I, I've heard a lot of negatives about allegories. People say, why can't we just tell the story? We're going to have to bring in this all, all these allegory pictures, allegorical pictures. But, you know, uh, it was actually the preferred method of teaching spiritual truths. As a matter of fact, poets, um, musicians uh, would use a, a verbal imagery or allegorical references. And Jesus, the scripture says that he never taught people without using allegory or parables. 
And so uh, when, when we talk about the different facets of the ground of the heart, uh, sometimes in religious circles, there can be weeds. And I wonder sometimes if the, the, the plants rubbing up against you don't, don't kind of tickle you and feel really good because it seems like we get comfortable in that, you know, as like, man, that feels good. Uh, but the truth is, uh, you, you can't live by feelings. And I always say this, that, that knowing is greater than feelings. Yes. What you know must be greater than what you feel because what you feel, if, especially if it's a, from a human awareness perspective, a, a, an earthly realm experience, uh, the thing is that, um, you know, uh, I, I get it. I mean, we really need to have more to us than, we need to be that, 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 that type of, of consciousness, and I do want you to talk about that. Uh, that is sown on good ground because if you if you're not uh, planted in your thinking on good ground, and it's thorny ground or it's stony ground, etc., uh, you you can change that uh, okay. because we're talking about conscious awareness here. And uh, so, and I I was aware that as I was studying this. Uh, that in these parables, especially just Matthew chapter 13, there's seven different parables. But one of the things uh, you and I discussed briefly was the, the different levels of consciousness. And I think people would be interested tonight to know uh, about maybe something that would identify with their present conscious awareness and how they can move on to a deeper uh, level of conscious awareness. So I, I just maybe you might want to talk about that okay no problem well you know um, this not only occurs in matthew but in two other gospels and right uh, in mark chapter four it occurs too and jesus after he gives the parable he talks to his disciples and he you know he, he starts talking to them about i'm going to explain what you know how they would always do him hey tell us what you what what, what you just said what did it mean and so he, he starts talking to them and like here's one for example where he, said, he says the sower sows the word, but then it falls by the wayside or the hearer hears it and it goes by the wayside and then Satan comes and steals this word away. So, you know, uh, you see this to me, this Satan and Dr. Bill has great teaching on Satan, but I'm going to say for my purposes here tonight that allegorically Satan means is a state of mind in man mm -hmm. that causes man to believe in his own self-sufficiency. In other words, he's not, be, he's not tapped into the eternal supply. He's tapped into the limited supply and he's locked into a mindset. So you hear the word of truth or you experience the truth that you actually already are, the truth that's already within you. It begins to awaken, but because we've been so, uh, let me say it like this, programmed, we've been so programmed uh, we begin to get this self-concept again. This accuser comes within our, all of this is happening within me, within all of us. The accuser comes and uh, even the accuser will try to make us believe along with religion, I might say, that man is inherently evil, for example. Yeah. And so the accuser it is a picture of something within us that wants us to try to believe in our own self-sufficiency. But, you know, I like what Jesus said about Satan. He said, I saw him fall like lightning from the sky or from heaven. He saw him fall like lightning. It, it prompted me just to look up a couple of things. One thing in particular about lightning, and I made this note to myself, lightning is a force that gather, gathers, excuse me, and explodes and wastes its energy because it's not in harmony with the environment around it. And I thought, man, that is so true of us sometimes. We just waste our, our energy, our potential, our life force because we're not in harmony within our own selves. So Jesus says, the sower sows the word. Then this Satan, this adversary comes in his mind to take the word away. And if we're saying that these are mindsets and they represent consciousness, then if we can have each type within us, we can overcome each type within us. Mm -hmm. And the pathway to doing that, again, I believe, is to meditate or think or have focused attention on the right things. For example, the Apostle Paul, I believe, addresses this. I believe it's in Philippians when he tells us to think on these things and he gives us a list. Lovely, right. good report, all these kind of things. What does that mean? That means, so how do I get out? How do I get out of 
one mindset and into a, a more uh, aware mindset, the way I do it is by focusing on something else, concentrating on something else, directing my attention in another direction. And so this, this is what happens. Um, th this, this soil here that I was giving the example of the it falls by the wayside, to me, it's just a picture of hard packed soil. I think one of them, use, one of the descriptions uses that. It's just a picture of me when I'm unreceptive to the truth. That's all it is. When I hear the truth, that I'm unreceptive to it. And so I would venture to say, again, I'm speaking for myself. I, I wrote this note to me. I said, most Christians are not aware of the true teachings of Jesus. They hear them, but they don't understand them. And one reason I don't believe we understand it is what you mentioned before, Dr. Bill, is we try to take absolutely everything literally and I'm, I'm going to, once again, I'm making statements on my own here. I'm going to tell you, literally, the Bible makes zero sense to me anymore if I try to understand it literally. But if I think about it in metaphor or allegory, it begins to make beautiful sense to me. And of course, I'm saying that for myself. So this, you know, we can get wrapped up in a lot of things in our thinking, religious theories. I think that most of uh, a lot of what we try to do is just prove our own religious theories through teaching and things. So we can, we can move away or out of those type of mindsets or settings by focusing or refocusing on something different, something in line with spiritual thinking. So yeah. Jesus made this statement. He said, to the one who has, he'll get more. But to the one who doesn't have even what he's got, that's going to be taken away from him. That sounds like an unfair statement. But if you think about it allegorically, I believe what he's telling me is to the person who's awake to spiritual awareness, he's going to be awakened even more. Mm -hmm. He's going to keep getting more truth and understanding and the journey will continue. But to the person who has shut themselves down and who's unreceptive to the truth, even what they have will go away in conscious awareness because they don't meditate on it. They don't think about it. Now, look, this is not said in condemnation, obviously. I think we've all moved past that now. God loves, loves us no matter which one of these mindsets we're in. We're talking about um, objectively living the life of Christ here in the, in the body. So uh, think, about, I, I think about it like this. A baby is born in the natural. A baby is born and it grows to maturity. And for the most part, it's all downhill from there. And why? Because we don't develop our conscious awareness. Right. A baby is born beautiful. Uh, I, you, see, you mentioned Dr. K early, you know, she uses that scripture. I don't remember what it was, but you know, we came here upright. We came here righteous. Mm -hmm. We teach children they're not righteous. Mm -hmm. They came here righteous. And in a sense, because of the way the system has worked before before now, uh, we have developed mindsets that have taken us downhill. I'll give you a good example. We, we were taught that we couldn't possibly heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what we did was we built neurological pathways in our brains that we couldn't heal ourselves. And then when we began to think the thought that, hey, maybe the body can heal itself, we, would, we could not be convinced of it. It sounded like a crazy asinine statement because we were now locked in a mindset to where we literally believe you couldn't heal yourself, even though there are scriptures to the contrary to that, your body couldn't heal itself. So it's just, to me, it's just an example of being locked into a consciousness. And Jesus is painting a picture here through this, this parable that, hey, there are different types of conscious awareness that a person can be in, but you can change them by refocusing, remeditating, deeper thinking, and so I think this is why, whether you call it prayer, whether you call it meditation, whether you call it uh, focused attention, if you want to use quantum kind of language, right. it's so important to do those things because those, that is the path to emerging into this spiritual awareness, having an open mind, expanding your mind to new possibilities, not being locked into belief systems just because you once believed it doesn't mean you always got to believe it. I mean, think about all the belief systems we've changed just in the last five years. Right. And so, you know, then he gives another example. He talks about rocky ground. They, they hear it. They're happy to hear it. But then the pressures of life come and they revert back to what? 
Adamic awareness, an old awareness, the old way of doing things. And, and so he, it's just showing me that it, I can, now this is, all, this is all up to me, I can utilize the power of my thinking, the power of the word that is in me, the power of the Christ that I am, that we are, to focus my attention on things above, spiritual things, so that I elevate out of a conscious awareness of these temporal things. And once I, once I believe, once I elevate out of a conscious awareness of temporal things, I'm no longer bound by the temporal things. Right. I now am bound to something higher than the temporal things of life. Now, I'm not pretending to have mastered this yet, but at least in the fact that we're talking about it will open our minds to, to the possibilities that there's much more to us than we believe, much more to this life than we believe. And we are now open enough or opening up enough, yeah. I think, that we can hear deeper truths. The spirit can reveal deeper things to us and we won't push it away right away. We may have to shelf it, think about it, meditate on it, but we're open to doing those things. And um, I don't know, Dr. Bill, I know you mentioned we're not talking about sitting around chanting, but I, maybe sometimes that might be better than some of the things some people are hearing in some places. But um, so, you know, I'm just seeing this as a way to, to look within, to see how to influence what you're, what you're focusing on, what you're thinking about, what you're meditating on, whatever word, what you're praying about, whatever your word is you want to use. And so as we hear the truth and the truth that it, this is the truth that's already within us, it's not a new truth coming from an external, as we well know, it's a truth that's in us. Right. Then after we begin to see these new and fresh revelations, we should mull them over. We should think them over. It's like Mary, when the angel announced to Mary that she was going to have a baby, the scripture says about Mary, she pondered these things right. in her heart or her awareness, or she meditated on these things. And Mary meditated on the word that she got long enough until she actually physically became pregnant and she actually physically birthed a child. And that was all, she was impregnated by the word of the Lord entering into her consciousness. And she kept developing that word by thinking it over, mulling it over. She wasn't discussing it with other people. She was discussing it, discussing it within herself and the more she talked it over, the more she meditated, the more she focused upon it, the, the more concrete that concept got within her awareness. And it finally got to the point that it manifested itself right out of her actual awareness. And so all of this to me is just Jesus taking the opportunity to teach me something here about myself in that what, whatever, we've said this many times, whatever we focus on, that's what we're going to manifest. Whatever we focus on, that's what we're going to manifest. And if I want to manifest something different, then all I need to do is change my focus. And the more wise we get about that, and the more wisdom we have about that, and the more mature we become, the easier it will be to change focus. We'll be able to catch ourselves when we're losing focus and refocus ourselves, think on the appropriate things. And this is not about good and bad. This is about life and death. For example, if a person is full of thoughts of life, that person will tend to be more alive. If a person is full of thoughts of death, that person will tend to exhibit what they're thinking. And so if you don't think people are, are living out of what they're thinking, just ask somebody you meet, how are they? And what will they do? They will tell you how they feel. They won't tell you how they are. They will tell you how they feel. Right. I'm sick, I'm hurting, I'm what and I'm not putting them down. I have done those very things myself. And, and so this is an educational process, if you will, let me use that word. Uh, and again, I said process or journey. It's not something you don't have, right. but I, I will say this. It's something that you do develop That's right. as you become more mature and you can focus in, hone in on these things. And I don't know if we have, may have time, may not, but that's exactly what quantum is all about. Yeah. Looking at the field and whatever you put your attention on, that is the thing that you attract, you are attracted to, and that is attracted to you. And so 
this is a deep lesson to me that Jesus is teaching much deeper than just, you know, uh, a simple farming lesson. It's, it's a much right. deeper practical consciousness lesson that he's teaching here. Right. And, and, you know, when you're talking, it, it makes me think of, uh, and I know people get bothered when I refer to uh, Adam as uh, Satan or a, a devil or Lucifer, uh, yeah. but quite honestly, based on the, the law of first mention, for the law of first mention to be valid in anything, especially scripture, there has to be a second mention in which Lucifer is not. And of course, Lucifer was talking about, I, I believe, was talking about Adam. Uh, but then when you see uh, what you quoted there from um, uh, the scriptures about lightning, uh, it was, uh, this, this was like lightning fell from heaven, I, I also see as, as the Adamic mindset. But you have to think about it this way, not so much as Adam the man as it was the consciousness mm -hmm. of man. And so when we talk about consciousness, you know, here's the thing I think about. I think about, and you're right, you know, uh, both of you, you know, we, we adopt this stuff uh, over years and years of indoctrination, whether, whether church, uh, I mean, it's, it's sad to go, you go into church and the first thing that the obvious thing you're going to say to someone is, how are you doing? <laughs> and man, sometimes you walk away from that thing thinking, I wish I would have never asked that question. Um, but, you know, the thing is, is that when, when Adam took on this false identity, or there was the two, but there was one, Man, that's such a, a great teaching also, but there, there was two, but there was one, but that, that consciousness, that mistaken identity consciousness was adopted from generation to generation by the belief that that's the way it had to be. And there was no way out from that mindset. Now, of course, then we look at the cross and we say, well, God sent Jesus so that we could get redeemed. Uh, and I, I, I like the word redeemed, but I like the word reconciled better because it really means to be reconnected to that which we were connected to in the first place in origin. But, you know, we, we thank God for the cross. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for what he did. He didn't do as himself, but he did it as me. He did it as you. And so it was really me going to the cross. And the Apostle Paul probably understood that uh, better than anybody in his day. And so, you know, the fact is we do not, we're not of Adam, so we don't have to take on, or let's say it this way, we've already messed that one up. We don't have to keep the Adam mindset. Now, in my teachings in college, I call it the, especially on Thursday, uh, on my Take Another Look program, I call it the Adam religion, but I also call it the Adam lie. Uh, because it's, it's not that Adam was trying to deceive the whole world directly or intentionally, but that's what happened. Deception came in, mankind became deceived, and it became a religion, a worldwide religion that has fostered many religious avenues, and, and all of them believe they're right. OK, I mean, literally all of them believe they're right and they've got the answer. And, but it all stems from from mistaken identity. And and so, you know, a, Apostle Germain, um, the more the more open and, and Dr. Michael was really uh, alluding to all of this, the more open to spiritual consciousness one is. Uh, that person will gain. And Jesus talks about that. You know, he has an ear to hear, let him hear. It's, it's amazing that Matthew writes it that way as, as Jesus is speaking, regardless of the misinterpretation of our English Bibles or the mistranslation. And then John takes that same concept all the way in the book of Revelation, and he's telling those churches, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's saying. You know, if you really want to hear, you can hear what Holy Spirit's saying, because to hear what Holy Spirit's saying, you've got to look at, because when we're talking about canonization or not even canonization, even before that, you know, Apostle Germain, there was such battles over what belonged in scriptures and what didn't belong in scriptures. And some people actually adopted things that never were canonized that they held true as their, this is my go-to uh, document for what I believe and I'm not, I'm not changing from that. And it's amazing. And, and, you know, unfortunately we do the same thing today, but let me just back up a moment and say the less conscious spiritual consciousness 
Uh, and I think I, I've seen Dr. Michael Porter write it this way, less spiritual consciousness of dust realm thinking we have, the less we're going to have. So if you choose not to focus on something, or let's say it this way, if you choose to focus on it less, okay, the less it's going to become in you. So we look at our bodies and people, here's one of the big things, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to get off on something, but here it goes. Uh, uh, <laughs> we think that to leave this world means I'm no longer in my body. But think about this. God didn't create me as three beings. He created me with as one being with three expressions. Now, if God created me with three expressions, spirit, soul, and body, but I am one. And the more uh, the rest of me gets the idea that we're one, the more we manifest uh, as the, the manifested Christ, the resurrected Christ. But think about it this way. Um, I can never be void of my body. That's right. Whether you see me laying in the ground or not, it really has nothing to do with it. That, that's just a physical appearance. So I am one. I'm one with my, my whole being, but I'm also one with my father, my creator. And so the more I think like that, it might like sound like outer space type thinking, or as Dr. Michael says, you know, qu quantum physics. I love physics. I love philosophy. I love psychology. But I'll tell you what, who I am is who God says I am. And that's the, that's the ticket today to discovering who God says you are, what he says about you, and embrace that and shed everything else because it's holding you down. It's dragging people. It's destroying people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. No, it, 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 one of the beautiful things, too, about platforms like this and others, uh, Dr. K and others that are having a conversation, you know, about uh, present truths and, and about our conscious awareness is that, um you know, it, maybe in this generation we're digging at thirty percent, sixty percent. You know, but we're at, but we're making a, a headway, if you will. You know, yes. where a hundred percent of reality to be made manifest. You know, of of, of who we really are. And so uh, the exciting thing about this is that uh, wherever you are, you know, Father will meet you wherever you are. You know, in your awareness, and your understanding. You know, and lead you now. So. So in testimony, uh, I could say, you know, for myself, in my journey, in my process, as Dr. Porter was saying about, you know, where we are. And so you, so for me, like now, it, you know, it's shifting focus. And so it's been on the goodness of God, you know, the, the questions, you know, really digging into uh, uh, the, the questions about the goodness of God. And because in that, you know, is, 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 is a reality, not just of him, but a reality of, of myself, a reality of all of humanity. And so as you, as, as I'm learning to, to see that. And so uh, given to where we are in, in today's age, you know, people to say, oh, 2020 is this, or 2020 is the worst year ever, you know, which technically mm -hmm. is not true, you know, historically, if you, if you consider, if you, if you study history, but, you know, it can feel that way. It can seem that way. So there are a lot of things, you know, uh, that we are presently in that feels, you know, a certain way. It feels, for some people because of, you know, the certain uh, conditioning that we have and, the, and, and what has been placed upon us as our lens and to project out, you know, but if I am uh, 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 meditating or, or, or looking upon the, uh, the goodness of God, and so when I look out into the world around me, that's what I can see, you know, and perceive in a situation and circumstance, you know, is the goodness of God. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. You know, is the goodness of God. And so um, it, it, it becomes a part of, you know, adjusting my reality. And so um, I can be in expectation, you know, to see goodness manifest in a situation rather it's not about a political sway or, you know, political this or political that, yes, you know, right. his, his goodness becomes my reality. And so it becomes a part of my, my, my conscious awareness. And so uh, I can get excited. And so the, the, the spillover, you, you can see the, the, the uh, Dr. Porter talked about the wasted energy, the lightning, the lightning is like the wasted energy. And so now that I'm giving my focus to the goodness of God and meditating on that, uh, for me and my own uh, uh, awareness and understanding, uh, it's, I'm giving energy to that. And so it, it can't do nothing but manifest 
around me and through me, you know, now a person may look at the situation, you can look at a situation and you have a choice to perceive it in one light or you have a choice to perceive it in another. And so I, I choose to perceive it in the, in, the, in the light of his goodness. And so in the light of his goodness, I, I, I begin to challenge uh, old paradigms, old religious conditioning and mindsets or academic uh, perceptions and realities no longer becomes my launching place. My launching place becomes from the eternal reality of his truth, his nature uh, that is mirrored in me. And so it, it, then it spills over to your emotions. You start getting excited. And so they like, well, why are you excited? This is, this is horrible. 2020 is horrible. No, it is not. It, for some people, it is the best of times. And that's a choice you, you, can, you can perceive it to be. And for other people, it's the worst of times. And there's a choice that you can choose to give life to that, or you can choose to see, and I'm telling you, for me personally, this year has been nothing more than exceptional and phenomenal. And I'm in expectation, you know, to see not just the goodness of God in my life, but in, in others and seeing it manifest all across the globe and all around the world as humanity is waking up to the reality of not just his goodness somewhere out there, but his goodness in us. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Because, you, you know, uh, one of the things, uh, and I do tell people, don't, don't give up hope. Uh, hope, uh, Bible hope, the, the Greek definition for hope, I define as a confident expectation of good. Uh, because, you know, here's why. I've known two people that their confident expectation was bad. Um, you know, we're going to get the flu. We're going to get the next disease that rolls around. We're going to, we're going to have a car wreck today. Uh, you know, our house might, burn. I mean, this, this constant, uh, verbalizing, you know, we're, you know, verbalizing comes from that, which you meditate on. Okay. And when you constantly meditate on bad things, sooner or later, you're going to begin to prophesy That's and it. declare those bad things. Well, wh why don't we choose to have a spiritual consciousness about us and meditate on uh, who God created us as, who he says we are. And we, we, when we prophesy, okay, you, you know, I, I can't help but mention this. In the morning, I'll be doing Revelation 21, verse 7 and 8. And I want to tell you something. You talk about prophes showing that God was prophesying the end from the beginning. Man, it, it's happening, okay? And that's why chapter 21 and 22 are very much likened to not even Genesis 1, but even pre-creation, because God's prophesying. He's showing the end from the beginning and it's like this is the way it was supposed to be the whole time right. and even even in and, and i love what you said dr michael because so many people don't understand that and, and i imagine a lot of our students wouldn't understand that and I, and I know we're careful how we say things uh but that's that you know the bible we have I, I tell students, you know, our Bibles are greatly mis mistranslated, our English versions of the Bible, our modern versions of the Bible, and I, and I tell them what versions that I think are more accurate than others. Sometimes it's the Mirror Bible, sometimes it's the Passion Translation, but I pick and choose because uh, it's important that people all around the world know that if we're going to have a proper understanding of what God says, number one, of course, Holy Spirit uh, teaches us all, 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 brings us into all truth, the, the fullness of truth, but also you've got to study, okay, study. And now, now let me just say this. I get this thrown at me all the time. Probably you guys do too. That Second Timothy two, that study to show yourselves approved, which had nothing to do with your labor or your effort of studying. It, it really, in the, the Greek culture, it was more about how you value the understanding truth than it was how much time you spend in doing it. Um, and, and, but I, but I, just, I just love the idea that, you know, if I apply, I mean, wasn't it that way in school for you guys, if I apply myself? Okay, when I was uh, in high school, I was bad at applying myself. I mean, I slid by because I was, I was a track star and, uh, you know, my, and I was in the, I was an A student in art and my, my, my track coach, like they made sure I was getting through, you know, but, and I don't say that, you know, I had to, I had to make some changes and some adjustments to get the, the, the degree and to move on and all that. But the point is, is applying myself now, Dr. Michael is effortless. Okay. It's like, this is no challenge. Now, is it, 
uh, do I find it difficult sometimes to get the job? When I'm studying and I'm breaking things apart and trying to develop a doctorate degree course, of course, yes, it is. But, but you know, it's like light at the end of the tunnel. It's like, man, it always you always get to the conclusion. It, it's so much fun for Holy Spirit to guide you or to lead you into all truth. And uh, I, I tell you, um, I don't want to be closed off to spiritual consciousness. I don't want to have less than I could have uh, because I'm teaching people that the fullness of God is in them. Now I haven't achieved that yet. And you've said that a whole lot. And I say, I haven't achieved, I'm not, I haven't got the full understanding of that yet, but man, I believe it's there. I believe it's mine and I'm going for the whole thing. It's, it's all or nothing. And I know that nothing's not an option. (laughs) Go ahead. Well, you know, I think about that scripture that says study to show yourself approved this way. I don't study to be approved, but by studying, I find that I am approved already. Amen. So when I study, I show myself, I show me, I am already <laughs> approved. But, so we're talking about how do you get to this place where you're the good soul in this parable where you, and I just right. wrote down a couple of things. They're not all inclusive. They're just some of my thinking. The first one I put down was be an open thinker. Be okay. open to new realities. Admit to yourself, I don't have, I don't, I haven't developed all of my awareness yet. I have all that I need, but I am not aware of all that I have. So go from there. And then I think Jesus gave us a beautiful way to get to this place of being able to move in this consciousness. And he did it in this simple sentence here. He said, not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. So I think the way we become more acceptable to the things of the truth is to become unselfish. Most of the beliefs that we hold on to, we just do it because it preserves our image of self. You take it away, you know, like, you know, if you take away the buildings and stuff like that, I don't know if people would even consider themselves what they were before, you know, in ministry and things like that. I'm just using an example. So being an open thinker, be open to new things. Think about Jesus and the Jewish people. He showed up. He shows up and tells them, hey, guys, this is all coming to an end. I'm I'm sorry to tell you, that's why I'm here. This sacrificial system, what you believe for thousands of years. And many of them didn't, couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They just couldn't let go. But some did. And even if you relate that to the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, although many people did die because they refused to be open to a new way of thinking, right? 600,000 or more survived because they remembered awareness What Jesus had said, a new reality is on the scene, and here's what you do. And so they just remembered, and that's that type of meditation, that type of thinking, that type of concentrated focus. I mentioned the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4, 8, where he talks about this. And so I'm going to say, for me, this concept applies here to this parable, that I can build my own consciousness. Right. I can build it up from where it is in any area by meditating on what is true, meditating on the word, the truth that I am, not something I don't have, but something I do have. And I bring it up, if you will, let me just use that kind of bring it up into my awareness. And the more I focus on it, the more reality it becomes to me. And so, you know, even for example, some of the things we once easily believed we no longer believe now and they don't make any sense anymore. And our brains don't even want to entertain the thought of it. We've changed our idea about that thing. The goodness of God, Apostle Germain, is one of those things. Anytime any, I read anything or hear anything that sounds contrary to God is good, I just let it slide right on by now. I don't even think about it. And that you, before I would have thought about it because God seemed good sometimes and he didn't seem so good at other times. So we build our consciousness. And, you know, I I wrote this down on the bottom of this little page here to myself. If you do this, you'll live. If you continue to build your conscious awareness, build it up in the truth, build it up in knowledge, build it up in wisdom and understanding, you'll live and not die. That's what will happen to you. You'll become so reinforced. We'll become so reinforced 
with truth that that truth will be so overwhelming, it'll be our focus concentration it, that the realities of that truth will be attracted to us. Now, I said this to myself because I've been going through this lately. Maybe you guys can relate. I've been, I've been kind of dealing with the system lately. And I'm like, how do you fight the system? And I wrote this to myself. The way to fight the system is not to be a part of the system. Yeah. That's the way to fight it. It's not a war that you put wage a war. Yeah. It's that you exit that system of thinking, that system of belief, and you enter into a new belief system, which frees you up to many new realities. I, I remember when I began to change some of the belief systems that I had in the past 10 or 12 years, and how when one would fall, it would be like a domino and it would fall over and knock over another one. Well, now this doesn't make sense anymore. And I finally got to the point that I could be so open to go, I could start questioning everything. Well, why do I believe this is true? And why do I believe that is true? And I started investigating and I found out that some of the things I believe just simply weren't true. And I'm okay with that. That's not a problem with me. That's part of the journey that we're on. Right. So uh, I think we're getting close to our time. I just wanted to end here with some uh, practical scientific information about focused attention, if I could, for a second, Dr. Bill. Yes. That this is scientific, scientifically proved here. We lose focus or attention six to 10 times every minute on average. On average, now we have moments where we have really close attention and it lasts, but on average, six to 10 times every minute. So if you think about quantum or the field or God, whatever you want to terminology you want to put on it, and the concept that what I focus on, I attract to myself, right? Think about it. Nothing much gets attracted. This is how you hear the truth and you can't get it because you don't stay focused on it long enough. We lose our focus. Here's another example. The human brain processes. This is not going to sound right, but it is right. I checked it four times. The human brain processes 400 billion bits of information every second. Mm. 400 billion every second. But watch. We are only aware of about 2,000 bits of the 400 billion. And the 2,000 bits that we're aware of revolve around three things. Now tell me if this doesn't sound like us, or at least the old us, we're emerging now. It revolves around body consciousness. How do I feel? I'm cold, I'm hot, I'm hurting, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Environment, it's too cold in here, it's too hot in here. Yep. And time. Yep. Body consciousness, environment, and time. So think about it. My brain, your brain, is processing 400 billion bits of information every second, but I only pay attention to a minute amount of it. So what would happen to me if I started paying attention to Jesus. all the other information my brain is processing Jesus. and stop saying, you know, how long will this last and, you know, all this stuff. So if I become, if I take the consciousness away of body, environment, and time, I'm no longer bound by body, environment, or time. And you see, that's the thinking I believe Jesus is, is talking to us about here, that we are able to build our conscious awareness by the way and the manner in which we focus on things. This opens us up to the things of the spirit by paying attention to these things, by praying, by meditating, it opens up to all the possibilities. And again, back to Apostle Paul, he ends by saying, think, meditate, pray, mull over on these things. In other words, stop thinking on these things and think on these things. And you know, you can have a, a thought in your mind that you can't seem to get rid of, but if you get yourself busy with something else, all of a sudden you forget about the thought that you were thinking. So I just wanted to take a minute and show how we unfocused we really are and we've been trained to be and how most of what we believed somebody just told us and we accepted it as truth and that how, how we come here as children and we're really free and open. I mean, you tell a child anything, they'll believe it. That's if right. you told them to 
the sky was purple, they would believe it was purple, right? If they didn't know, for example, you can know the shape of a circle and you can know the color red, but you won't know a tomato is a tomato unless somebody tells you it's one. That's you right. got the shape down and you got color down, but you don't know what it is. And what, and so we're, that's why the Bible, I believe, says train up a child in the way in which he should go. What if we begin to develop at infancy children who believed in anything was possible, they weren't bound by their bodies, they weren't bound by their environment, and they weren't bound by time. What kind of generation of people would that be? We're on this journey of beginning to change our minds about these things now, and we're actually beginning to believe uh, audacious things can happen. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. amen. And, and you know, here, here it's amazing that we're talking about those who operate um, you know, in the 30 uh, fold um, consciousness as, a, as just an, as an allegory, uh, as opposed to those who operate at a, a 100 fold uh, consciousness. You, you think about, uh, you, you mentioned um, uh, AD 70, and I think you said about 600,000 that survived uh, over a million, a million or more people died. Mm -hmm. uh, and um you know, one of the greatest historians, of course, there was many historians, but the one I like, like most of that time, era was Josephus, and uh, who, who was a, a Jewish man. Uh, but let me just say this, that uh, we see that just because there was a smaller amount that survived than who perished doesn't mean this is the path of the equation for all of mankind for all eternity in saying that there's only a few that's going to survive and a few that's not. That's not the case at all. Uh, we believe that all are coming into the kingdom or all are coming into a Christ mind. Um, and, and, you know, what? I, one of the scriptures I, I love is... Um, um, when when Peter said that, uh, and, and this also applies, I think, to what you were saying, Peter said that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. Now, I know there's a lot of renditions or, or applications of that, but for me, um, the, the one day is that God lives in the moment. So the moment that God is in right now is the moment of origin before time began. He lives in that moment when he said, be, and it was, he doesn't change his mind. He doesn't alter. He doesn't see it different. He doesn't contemplate. And so if I say to my body, you are as whole as God is whole. And I don't move from that. But the, the, the fall, the bad side is we were programmed differently in our youth. And so we've dealt with a lot of things. Let me just say it this way. We brought a lot of things on ourselves because we were taught a certain way. Uh, but, but the thousand years I, I teach as has to do with uh, linear time that we're so used to linear time that we see everything. We're so far apart from the beginning. And here we've got so much further to go and we got all these problems and we're looking at uh, one day after another, instead of saying, wait a minute and stopping and saying, you know what? I want to live in the moment where God lives. I want to live in that creative moment. And everything that God said about me is absolutely 100% a fact and that's where I'm going to live. That's where I'm going to stay. I'm not going to consider any other variation. And so, you know, we, we got to get this dust realm thinking out of us because we've lived in it for so long. We can taste dust and we hate it. We think dust and we hate it. And it's like, you know, hey, I've got a glimpse of something. I've got a glimpse of a humidifier. I've got a glimpse of, of, of a supernatural humidifier. It's getting that dust smell and that dust thinking out of my mind. The cobwebs are getting blown out by the, the, the supernatural uh, 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 leaf blower. And I'm not going to think that way anymore. And that is a choice. That, that's a choice we can make. And, uh, you know, I would encourage people, I, I'm going to give the re remainder to Apostle Jermaine, but I would encourage people that go read Matthew chapter 13 or go look at the, this parable of the sower in the other gospel as well uh, of the three gospels and read how he gives the parable how he he gives these three stages of the parable and then finally he explains the parable but but don't just take it verbatim from scripture you need to, to really consider the, you know the understanding of scripture but uh i mean apostle germain can we it's 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 hard for me to contemplate that humanity living in dust realm thinking forever because that would 
can collide with scripture that I believe in wholeheartedly that all are coming into the knowledge of truth. All are coming into it. And uh, so, you know, what's next for people? I mean, I don't want to prophesy 2020. You know, they're saying it's a bad year. It's the worst right. year ever. It's right. a great year. It's the greatest yeah. year ever. People don't know. Yeah. What's God telling us? Yeah, no, it, it, it is. It's, a, it's, it's, it's an awakening. Um, you know, the, the, the unveiling of, of sons happening, you know, this is global. It's not a Christian move. It's not a, a religious move. It's, it's, a, it's a humanity move. Uh, and I, I like to say this is that uh, humanity, you, we've been conditioned to see humanity, you know, as a timeline reality of something mm -hmm. that you suffer through, uh, and then you go on and, and, and you die and, and you know, go <laughs> on to the by and by. You know, that's how we reduce uh, the human experience, but the human experience is more substantive to that. And, and, and Father is saying, listen, this is not, listen, the, the, the human experience is just as divine as you perceive me to be. You know, mm -hmm. and so there is an excitement to an expectation to live spirit through and through um, and that you no longer have to judge reality from, you know, a, a, a di di dichotomy perspective of a good versus evil. But you live out of a reality of my goodness. You live out of the reality, you know, of, your, of, of our oneness. And so, like you said about living in the moment, you know, the moment becomes a moment and it never ceases to be a moment, Come on. you know, when, when you, when you really accept the reality of what we're saying, you know, there is never not a moment is, you know, every moment is a moment if you give life to it. And so when, it, when you give life to it, to the, every moment being a moment, you're always in expectation and you, uh, to a situation, even though there may be things that you may encounter, you know, that, that may speak contrary, there may be a contradiction, but even in, in the contradiction as Br uh, Apostle Chris, uh, Brian uh, teaches, you know, it, it itself becomes, you know, a reminder to say, you know, how far you are, how far you come and, you know, that you're no longer this person, you're no longer that person, you're no longer responding from a different place. And so, you know, the maturity, the, the, the light of this substance becomes uh, 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 truly irresistible. You know, can you take this light and hide it under a bushel? And so, you know, what can we expect? We can expect, you know, such an such a illumination taking place, you know, uh, in humanity. Uh, I, I call it like the parallels of reformation. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. if, when you look at the reformation movement or after that preceded was that what we call the age of enlightenment. And so there's an enlightenment that's taking place. There's you know the longevity of, of life is going to come about because of the, the spillover of awareness and understanding innovation takes off new technologies new concepts new approaches new ways of, of, of addressing situations and so you're going to begin to even see uh, because there's like this 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 uh, this filtering this overflow you know of science and faith uh, you know beginning to overflow and begin to interchange where it becomes a set of reality and so you begin to see schools you know that are are, are, are shaped to, to, to learning how to live from the inside out. And then I end with this. In my own home, what I did with me and my children and my family, I said, listen, we love the scriptures and we love the Bible. You know, and there's mm -hmm. things that you can pull from that because spirit mm -hmm. is not limited to speaking through the context of text. He can speak through and he can inspire a bumper sticker. And so um, I told them, listen, let's learn to live. I said, just as much as you give life and attention to the scriptures, give much life to the spirit of Christ that's in you. You know, give life to the kingdom of God that's in you. Uh, we, we may call it our second mind. We may call it the intuition. But the more that we give life to it, the more we give yeah. attention to it, the more we become more sensitive, you know, to this natural, what has been innate and natural and start moving in what we consider the supernatural, but we know that it's naturally supernatural because you're living out of your authentic and true self. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and I don't want to live any other way. And, and I know that's the heart of you guys. Um, you know, I, I just want to keep, and you know, here, here, let me just put a plug in. This is what I love about World Bible School University, okay? Uh, students ask me this all the time and other people who are, have colleges approach me and, and they want to know, you know, what curriculum are we using? And, you know, uh, you know, man, we're, we're still getting four years under our belt that, that we don't have yet. And we're writing our own stuff. I mean, 
we're, we're developing concepts. We're thinking outside the box and, and translating and interpreting scripture. There, there is no, you know, and I, you know, I know there's grace schools out there. I love uh, Dr. Don Keithley's school and uh, I, I love the, the things that are going on. I, I, there's so many people I appreciate out there, but we don't have any curriculum. We, we, we're going to we're writing books. Some of our courses will become books. But the thing is, is that, you know, I, I love thinking outside the box of possibility. You know, I have a natural imagination and I don't know uh, if a lot of people use their natural imagination on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I like to, but I'll tell you this, I've got a supernatural imagination. And, and I like to think about the possibilities of how much to the a point uh, by point identical, identicalness am I like my father. Are my eyes like my father? Do I see what my father is seeing? Am I feeling, if I could put that way, feeling or sensing what my father is sensing? Am I picking up on uh, the, the, the voices of the many-membered body worldwide, but not just worldwide in this natural, but supernaturally, the billions and billions of spirit beings. I, I, I just, my heart is, and I love this, what you guys are always saying this, and Dr. Michael, you especially, you know, I haven't got there yet. Well, I'm telling you, I haven't got there yet. But man, what a goal to shoot for. Uh, you know, am I just, as a spirit being, filling the essence of this body? Am I just feeling the essence of this world? Or am I feeling the essence, feeling the essence, F-I-L-L-I-N-G, the essence of the entire universe and beyond that God created? Mm. There's a translation in the Bible. I don't know where it is. I haven't used it for probably about four or five years, four years or so. But it actually says that very thing that God is, he's, he's God in the universe and everywhere he is, I am. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good. So. Good. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you for being on this panel as a regular panel members. And I also appreciate you for being professors of World Bible School University because uh, we're, we're doing something to, to, you know, it's not so much about just re-educating or just changing the minds of people, but we want people to take these concepts and expand on them. Uh, we want them to, to go beyond what we're teaching and, and find truths for themselves that it's like, you know, I love taking scriptures. Like I don't have an answer right now, but you know, uh, the answer belongs to me. I have the mind of my father. So let me get back to you. I love being that bold about it. And uh, you know, so yeah, uh, be open-minded. Thank you, Dr. Michael for that. And, and for Apostle Jermaine, you know, let me drop one last thing before we go off the air. Uh, I, I am a I, I have a martial arts background. I don't study anymore, but but one of my favorites of all times, of course, is Bruce Lee. Most people that would be the case. Bruce Lee had a philosophy. When they would ask him, "What style is your style?" he would say, "My style is no style. Mm -hmm. Have no style at all. Don't think." just react you just react automatically because you don't have a style down that says i got to get into this stance and i got to use this form and shouldn't we be the same when we're speaking gotta say wait a minute let me look up that scripture what about it's in you and let it flow out of you and and the word of the lord the true word of the lord because truth makes people free it's the only thing that makes people free and so don't like doctrine but i love truth beautiful amen thank you so much guys um hey everybody join me in the morning for revelation 21 verse 7 and 8 thursday night uh brett erickson is going to be on kingdom dynamics uh he is a new paraprofessional and a doctorate student for world bible school university and i had this all planned out before he became a student and uh and then third uh, friday morning uh pastor paul gray he lives about three hours from me right here and uh him and i are going to be doing a series over the next three weeks together so a whole lot of good stuff going on. Nice. Everybody have a great evening. Thank you guys for being on tonight. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, everybody watching tonight, hey, please click like and click share. Let people know about this show. This was very in-depth, very encouraging. And we'll see everybody soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.